So let's have a look at another example. In this example, we have two variables that are going to be related by an equation, but they're going to be functions of a third variable, time. Both of them are going to be changing in time. And we're going to be interested in a time derivative. And time isn't going to be one of the variables in our equation. It's actually going to be the independent variable that our two other variables are functions of. So it's going to be a slightly different example than the one we just did. We're not interested in the slope of a tangent line to a point on the curve. However, implicit differentiation is going to be the tool that we need to solve this problem as well. So let's have a look at what the problem is actually saying. So suppose we have water being emptied from a spherical tank of radius 10 feet. So we've got some spherical tank. And we know the radius of this tank is it's 10 feet. If the depth of the water in the tank is 5 feet, okay, so the water levels below the midpoint, and decreasing at a rate of 3 feet per second, at what rate is the radius of the top surface of the water decreasing? Okay, so let's just draw a little snapshot in time of what we have here. We've got some water in the tank, and there's our surface of our water. Of course, we're looking at it from this sort of side perspective. So this is actually a circle. It's just skewed a little bit because we're looking at it from the side. If you look at it from the top down, it'll look like a perfect circle there. So that's our water level surface. We know the water level is decreasing, so this circle is going to be shrinking. So if we know how fast the water level is dropping, can we determine how fast the circle is shrinking? That's the goal here. So let's have a look at sort of an animation of this. So there's our water level dropping. We can see that as the depth decreases, the radius of the circle decreases. And the question is, we'll back it up here a little bit. As our water level drops, as soon as it hits 5 feet, that circle's shrinking at a particular rate. So if we know how fast it's dropping, right at the moment where you pass that 5 foot depth mark, can we figure out how fast the circle is shrinking? What is its derivative? What is the derivative of that radius in time? So that's our, our goal here. So let's jot down some things that we're going to need to work with. So we've got a circle in the top here as our surface. The radius is going to be changing, so we should give that radius a name. Let's call it r. We've also got the depth of the water, which is changing. So maybe we'll call that height. So that'll be h. So let's name our variables here. So let r, which is a function of t, so we'll emphasize that here. So let r be the radius of the water, the water surface. at time t. Let h, again, which is also a function of t, be the depth. So you may say, why didn't I choose d if I'm going to call it depth? Well, we already used d in the notation of the derivative. So I don't want to add to confusion there. So we'll pick a variable that we aren't using. So let h be the depth of the water at time t. What do we know about these things? Well, we know we know that the depth of the water is decreasing at a rate of 3 feet per second. So we know dh dt is equal to what? Well, again, let's read the sen sentence again and unpack the information. So if the depth of the water in the tank is 5 feet, and is decreasing at the rate of 3 feet per second. So what that means is we don't know for certain that it's decreasing at a rate of 3 feet per second always. We just know at the, s at the moment it has a depth of 5 feet, it is decreasing at that rate. So the derivative at the moment h is 5 has a value of what? So it's 3 feet per second. We've got to be careful here. Is the derivative 3? Well, no. It's decreasing 
at a rate of 3 feet per second. So that means it is negative 3. So the derivative is negative 3. Okay, what do we want to find? What's our goal? In solving this problem, we want to find the rate, at what rate is the radius of the top surface of the water decreasing? So we want to find dr dt at the precise moment when h is 5. That's our big thing. What do we, that's our big thing that we want to find. Okay, so now we know something about h. We want to find something about r. That means a good place to start looking is for a relationship between h and r. So let's look at our diagram. What's the relationship between h and r? Well, it might help to think about these things as moving, so maybe we'll look at our visualization here. So there's our h value, there's our r value. How are they related to each other? Now your first response might be to try to connect the point here with the bottom of the tank and look at that right triangle to come up with a relationship. The problem is the hypotenuse of that right triangle is changing as well. Can we find something in the diagram that's not changing as the depth drops? Is there something that's constant in here? Certainly, there's the radius is 10, so the radius is fixed. It's not changing. So what I can do is I can look at this triangle where I incorporate the radius as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. I still have the radius of the water level surface as one side of the triangle. And then I've got this height over here, which just happens to be the difference between the full radius of the sphere, which is 10, minus the depth. And now that's a relationship between two sides of a triangle and then the third side being constant. And so that's the one we're going to use. So let's draw that in here. We've got this triangle here, and this side of the triangle is 10 minus h. So what is our relationship? Our relationship is the Pythagorean theorem. It's 10 minus h squared plus r squared is equal to 10 squared. So that's the triangle we're looking at here. We're looking at this triangle, which is 10, 10 minus h, and r. So there's our relationship between h and r. Now we can go ahead and we can differentiate. I want a relationship between their derivatives. Notice it's their time derivatives. So I differentiate with respect to time. d by dt of 10 minus h all squared plus r squared is equal to d by dt of 10 squared. So this is the implicit differentiation part. We differentiate through the entire equation, both sides, by d by dt. So what's the derivative? So the first piece, 10 minus h all squared, that's a composition. It's something being squared. So the outside function is the squaring function. And so its derivative is 2 times whatever's inside to the first power times the derivative of whatever's inside. So we've got the inside function now, 10 minus h, plus, and this r squared, what's its derivative? Well, it's the outside function, which is the squaring function, so it's 2 times the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. Again, this is the chain rule. What's our inside function? It's r in this case. And then on the far right, it's the derivative of 10 squared. 10 squared, just a constant, so its derivative is 0. And so now we continue on. Let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. What's the derivative of 10 minus h? Well, the derivative of 10 is 0. And the derivative of minus h with respect to t is just negative dh dt. And rather than risk making it look like I'm subtracting, that negative sign is in front of the derivative, so I'll enclose it in some brackets. And then we've got 2r dr dt, and that's equal to 0. Now this is where it's helpful that we noted what we know and what we need to find. What do we know? We know dh dt at a particular snapshot in time, so we know dh dt, we know h at that moment, we could figure out r at that same moment using this triangle that we drew over here. 
we want to find dr dt. So this is the thing we want to find. It's caught up in this equation, so we can go ahead and isolate it. So we're going to solve for dr dt. So we move the other stuff on in the equation over to the other side. 10, 2 times 10 minus h. And when I bring it over, I can get rid of that negative sign that's in front of dh dt. So it's dh dt. And then I divide by the coefficient of dr dt. And so that's 2r. Now I can plug in information. So plug in values. We've got our relationship between our derivatives now. Now we can just go ahead and evaluate it. So what are the values? Well, the values are h is 5, r is, do we know what r is? Well, let's pause on that for a second. dh dt at the moment that h is 5 is negative 3, so we know that. So what is r? Well, this is where that triangle comes in handy again the relationship between the original quantities. So we've got at when h is 5, the height of the triangle is 10 minus h, or 5. The hypotenuse is 10. Our r value, which we're trying to find, well, that's going to be r squared is equal to 10 squared minus 5 squared, or 75. So r is equal to 5 root 3. So that's our little thought bubble here. So that's our value of 5 root 3. Now we have all the different bits of information we need to plug into the expression. So what is dr dt when h is 5? It is 2 times 10 minus 5 all over 2 times 5 root 3 times negative 3. 10 minus 5 is 5. That cancels with the 5 down below. The 2's cancel off. I get a 3 on top, a root 3 on the bottom. That's just equal to root 3 with a negative out front. That's negative root 3. Word problem, always have to answer in terms of the units. That's the only way that our answer actually even makes sense is if we include the units. We read the units off from the form of the derivative. It's a rate of change in r with respect to t. What was r measured in? r was measured in feet. What is time measured in? Seconds. So this is feet per second. So when water depth is 5 feet, the radius is decreasing at square root of 3 feet per second. Notice when I wrote this statement up, I used the word decreasing to capture the fact that it's shrinking. And that accounts for that negative sign in the derivative. And then I wrote the magnitude of the, the rate of change there, which is square root of 3 feet per second. All right, so that's it for this example.